Hey, what's going on guys? Realm Gaming here. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention some of my socials in the description of the video. If you want to support the channel, please check those out. If you want to support the channel in other ways, please consider just dropping a like or a nice comment somewhere in the video. It really helps the algorithm push our content out there to a broader audience. With that being said, hope you guys enjoy the episode. Hey, what's going on guys? Realm Gaming here, back to the video. Today's episode, wanted to go over Restoration Druid. This is going to be simply a pre-patch guide. This is not going to cover hero talents or anything like that. This is just going to be like a basic overview of some of the changes that Restoration Drew is getting. We're going to do like a basic beginner damage rotation and healing rotation. Then I'll just kind of give some closing thoughts on, you know, how I kind of think the spec feels and how it plays the uh, just kind of overall state of Restoration Druid right now in pre-patch. And like I said, this is going to cover a whole bunch of beginner stuff to kind of help people. I'm kind of doing a series right now, but the whole idea of the series is to help people pick a main going into War Within. Okay, let's talk about some of the core changes coming to Restoration Druid. So the first core change I want to talk about is this Master Shapeshifter here. And just to read it out here, your abilities are amplified based on your current shapeshift form, granting you additional effects. And then as a baseline, your Wrath, Starfire, Star Surge will deal 30% additional damage and generate 2,500 mana. Also in bear form, Iron Fur is gonna grant 30% additional armor and generate 2,500 mana. And then in cat form, Rip Ferocious Bite Maim deals 6% additional damage and generate 10,000 mana when cast with five combo points. So I love Master Shapeshifter because this allows us to do damage in cat form and out of cat form. Because not only are we doing good damage in both forms, we're also getting mana back. And historically speaking, for Restoration Druid, mana has been, at least when I played it in Dragonflight, mana was a big issue for me when I played it because it's, it's so easy to overheal on a Restoration Druid and do a whole bunch of healing that's not necessary. So being able to get so much mana back just from doing our basic normal damage rotation is a huge win for the spec. Then we also have a new talent here called Dream of Sonaris. So what this is going to do is while our Heart of, Heart of the Wild is active, Wrath and Shred will transfer 150% of their damage and Starfire and Swipe will transfer 100% of their damage into healing on a nearby ally. So this means we can pop our Heart of the Wild and just send damage and do an insane amount of healing through our damage. So this is really nice. It's really fun to play around too with Heart of the Wild because basically our Wraths are being casted in like half a second. So you're almost just like a machine gun healer just spamming out Wraths. It's really cool. It's really fun to play with. Overall, I think Dream of Sonaris is just a great addition to the tree. Now, with that being said, right above it, we also have another new talent called Call of the Elder Druid. And basically, when you shift into a combat shapeshift form or cast Star Surge, you gain Heart of the Wild for 10 seconds once every one minute. So if you don't like playing with cat form at all, you can still get Star Surge and still get and still get some benefit from this. And this will be really nice in a Mythic Plus setting because this is going to allow us to go pack to pack and we'll basically have 10 seconds there that our damage is going to be healing our allies so it'll allow us to kind of set up our initial damage over time effects then we also have a new talent over here in the bottom right thriving vegetation Re rejuvenation instantly heals your target for 15 percent of its total periodic effect and rigorous duration is increased by three seconds so probably more of a raid talent there we also have another new talent here called Prosperity. Swiftman will now have two charges. And we also had some changes to Tranquility. We saw some similar changes to Divine Him and Holy Priest. Basically, Tranquility has been buffed by 400% on its initial healing, but also its initial heal is decreased beyond five targets. So you get a big burst heal from it when you need it, which is really nice. We have also got a slight buff to Rejuvenation. I say a slight buff. It was buffed by 60%, which is pretty big. Our Grove Guardians did get nerfed by 15% as well. So that one kind of stung a little. We saw some nerfs to Wild Growth. Verdant Infusion was also nerfed. This was reduced to 8 seconds from 12. And then there are a few other small nerfs in there. I'm not going to sit here and name every single one of them out. Uh, another major change was Adaptive Swarm was completely removed along with unbridled swarm as well i think this is really nice personally i didn't like having to have the weak r to track like who the most efficient target is to put the adaptive swarm on i don't think it was very friendly to new players i just don't think it fit very well i think if they were to include adaptive swarm i think they might need to redesign it just a little 
Then I can't remember if I said this already, but luxuriant soil was also removed as a talent. Okay, that's most of the core changes. I'm sure I missed a couple things in there, but I think I got the majority of it. So if all you were interested in was the changes in this video, thank you for watching. But now we're gonna kind of get into like the damage rotation and some of the healing rotation for beginner restoration druid. And again, this is gonna be geared kind of around mythic plus, not necessarily raid. You can probably take some of what we're gonna talk about and transfer it into a raid setting. But for the most part, we're just gonna be focused on mythic plus. Okay, so if you're a new restoration druid, the first thing that you have to understand is sort of how our mastery works. So our mastery harmony, your healing is increased by X amount for each of your heal over time effects on the target. So what this means is the more heal over time effects you have on your target, the stronger your heals become. So a lot of the times you'll kind of read about restoration druids sort of ramping their healing, and that's due to how our mastery works here. So there is a bit of setup to really get the ball rolling and to really get your hots ticking and to see that insane throughput that we typically see from restoration druid. So the build that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is gonna be the double life bloom build. So that's gonna be through photosynthesis and that's gonna be through undergrowth. So through undergrowth, you may life bloom two targets at once, but life blooms healing is reduced by 10%. And then, so that's gonna allow us to put up two life blooms. So that's very important. And then number two, photosynthesis. While your life bloom is on yourself, your periodic heals heal 10% faster. Then while your life blooms on ally, your periodic heals on them have a 4% chance to cause it to bloom. So what does that mean? It blooms. So if we go up to the top to our life bloom, so it, this will heal the target for X amount over 15 seconds. When life bloom expires or is dispelled on the target, it is instantly healed for X amount. So life bloom is probably going to be your strongest heal just because it synergizes with so many things in our kit and the bloom effect is very strong, especially when you pair it with something like Verdancy. So when life bloom blooms, up to three targets within your efflorescence are healed for 15,700. So very quickly, we have a lot of stuff going on already with just one spell. So let's take a look at that. So let's start with life bloom and you can kind of see here, this is starting to tick down. And when this hits zero, it's going to bloom and do a burst of healing. So we kind of see here, three, two, one, there goes the bloom, it healed me. So you can actually have two of these up on two different targets and you can get two blooms going. Now, one thing to note is that your life bloom counts as three stacks of your mastery harmony. So if we go back to our mastery harmony, 12.8 times three for our life bloom basically comes out to 38.4%. So now just from having one life bloom on that target, you as a healer will heal with 38.4% more healing with all your healing spells. So it's very important that you're getting your hots out and kind of maintaining them, but it's also very expensive to do that. So there's sort of this mana management game that you're kind of playing as well, but we'll talk about that more in a bit. Just for now, just understand the more hots you have out, the more healing you do. Now, going back to Verdancy, we have a spell called efflorescence here so efflorescence puts this green mushroom on the ground this flower thing whatever and basically people standing in it will become healed so with verdancy when your life bloom blooms and you have people standing in your efflorescence they're going to be healed for x amount now, this is very important because this does a lot a lot of healing especially if you have high mastery stacks so basically you can kind of get this chain reaction avertancy procs going off if people will actually stand in your efflorescence so whichever targets that you're putting life bloom on if it's yourself a dps whatever you want to make sure that that target with life bloom is in your efflorescence and the reason i'm talking about life bloom and efflorescence so much is because it's such a huge part of your healing kit these two synergize with each other so unbelievably well and it's something that you really need to focus on as a restoration druid is who you're putting your life bloom on, how life bloom even works, and then making sure those targets are in, within efflorescence. Now, another reason efflorescence is so strong is because we're running spring blossoms. Each target healed by efflorescence is healed for an additional 2,500 over six seconds. So this is a potentially five stacks of our mastery harmony. And if you can get five people with, with spring blossoms on them, you'll get basically 60% more healing just by pressing efflorescence from the rest of your kit. 
That's why it's so important to make sure that everybody is within your FLRS. Okay, I probably went a little bit too ham on that, but uh, you know, I just really wanted to drill that in. We'll move on to something else. Let's go ahead and talk about wild growth. So wild growth is gonna be your expensive AOE heal. It costs 9,500 mana. It's on a 10 second cooldown. It's not necessarily something you always want to be spamming, but when you need healing, this button will kind of help you get your group caught back up. So this is gonna be one of your main priority spells, but just watch your mana. If you're dipping below like 30, 40%, you might hold off on wild growth a little and try to get your mana back up. Okay, now, Gonna go back to Life Bloom for just a second here because we do have something called Omen of Clarity and this will basically make our next regrowth cost no mana. So we haven't talked about regrowth yet. So let's talk about it. So regrowth here. This is just basically your single target heal and it's gonna heal for X amount. It's pretty expensive, so you don't wanna just spam it either, but it does leave a, another hot on the target. So you will get you know, a stack of your Mastery Harmony from this. So just to show you what it looks like, you cast it, you get a hot effect, boom, you get a stack of Mastery. And then this is Regrowth, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. But basically what's happening here is your Life Bloom has a chance per tick to proc something called Omen of Clarity. When that does proc, that means your next Regrowth costs no mana. And then not only that, when we go into Flash of Clarity, those Regrowths actually heal for 30% more. And then this does go one step further into Tranquil Mind where this can actually stack your clear cast. So give me just a second here. I will proc Life Bloom. I'll get, I'll get Omen of Clarity to proc. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, you can see here it procced. We have these sort of green leaves on the side. And you see we got clear casting up here. Your next regrowth is free. I press it. You see it costs no mana. Okay, next let's talk about Swiftman. So this is gonna consume a regrowth, wild growth, or rejuvenation and basically instantly heal an ally. So what you can do is you can put a life bloom on your target. Excuse me, life bloom's not one of them. You can put a regrowth on your target and it will consume the regrowth effect and just do like an instant burst heal. Now we are running a talent here called Verdant Infusion. So in our specific case, Swiftman will not consume the heal over time effect. And instead it will actually extend the duration of your heal over time effects on that target by eight seconds. But if you were running the new Talent Prosperity, it would consume that heal over time effect and then Swiftman would just of course have to charge. Then the last spell I wanted to talk about is going to be our Rejuvenation here. And Rejuvenation is just kind of our baseline heal over time effect. You're not gonna be casting it too much because it is a bit of an expensive spell. It's not super expensive, but if you're spamming it, it can be expensive. Then at the same time, it doesn't do like a ton of healing, but if you know a high damage phase is going to come out, it is worth it to cast Rejuvenations before that damage comes out. So a lot of the times people will use Rejuvenations to buff the healing of their other spells if you're very uh, proactive to the damage that's about to be coming out. So Rejuvenation is something you want in your bars. You do want to be using it, but you don't want to just be spamming it all over the place. You do want to be using it proactively before damage comes out. Then the last spell I'm gonna talk about is our Grove Guardians here. This has three charges, and basically it's a little treant pet that you summon that will kind of help you heal. It'll it'll cast some single target healing. And then if you take Wild Synthesis here on cast, they will actually cast a Wild Growth. So if I remember correctly with Grove Guardians, due to the way some of the hero talents are working in War Within, you wanna just be using your Grove Guardians one by one, and you don't wanna be spamming them constantly like you don't want to have three out at any given time you just want to kind of rotate through them one by one so these guys are very strong and the best part about grove guardians is you can throw one out and it can cover a lot of the healing while you go into cat form and kind of do your damage rotation okay now let's talk about the damage rotation so damage rotation is a little complex especially for resto druid just because you're kind of weaving in and out of forms and there's a lot of buttons to press it's not just two or three buttons it's more like seven or eight buttons so since this is a beginner's guide, what I do, what I've done is I've made a macro and I have two macros. I have one macro for AOE damage. I have one macro for single target damage. Now the way that you're gonna keep your mana up is through Master Shapeshifter. And basically your Wrath, Starfire, or Star Surge. So we're not using Star Surge. So Wrath or Starfire are gonna generate 2,500 mana, which is very nice. 
And then in cat form, whenever you use a finisher at five combo points, you're gonna get 10,000 mana back. So the question becomes, should I stay out of cat form or should I go into cat form for my damage rotation? Because when you read Master Shapeshifter, I mean, both look good. Wrath and Starfire, it looks like that's really strong just spamming those. And then being in cat form looks really strong too. You get 10,000 mana back for five combo points. So which one do you do? And the answer to that question is you do both actually. So you want to go into cat form when you have a full energy bar. So we will go into the macro here shortly. I'll kind of show you what's going on there. But for now, typically what you're trying to do is you're coming in here, you're using the macro. And then from here, you're just spamming Starfires. Then once you get back to full energy on your cat form, once your bleeds start to kind of fall off, you can go back into it, spam the macro. Back into Starfires. And you can throw a Moonfire in there too. So you can see here, I'm doing almost 80k DPS. And my I don't I don't have Moonfire up on all targets. I don't have any dots over here on this target. I'm basically doing 80k DPS and a poorly geared restoration druid on three targets. So the whole point of the macro is not necessarily to be optimal. That's never the point of macros. The reason I put this into a macro is because it simplifies everything and it takes a whole bunch of buttons off my screen. So is this 100% efficient? Heck no. If you're trying to completely optimize your character, do not use any macros. But for me and for what I do, for the content that I push, it's good enough for me. Let's take a quick look at it. So what this is, I just named it Druid AOE Damage. It's a thrash into a swipe, into a rake, into a rip, into a sunfire. Now, sometimes this will generate five combo points. Sometimes it won't. Remember, we want five combo points for Master Shapeshifter. And the reason it may or may not is gonna be due to, I believe it's Primal Fury here. Yeah, so when you critical strike with an ability that generates a combo point, it will grant you an additional combo point. So if we go back to the macro again, if we're not critical striking, we're only generating three combo points into our rip, which means we're not getting that 10,000 mana back. But most of the time you do. So that's why this is not necessarily wildly efficient, but it also kind of is because you're getting through your energy bar. You're not having to sit there and wait. You're not, you don't have to wait on energy to come back up so that you can get a couple more combo points for a full rip. And then finally, at the very end, you can kind of finish it off with a Sunfire and that's going to get you out of cat form instantly. You could also put like a cancel form in there if you wanted to, but Sunfire is always nice. You always want to have it up anyway. So I just use Sunfire to get myself out of the form. And again, the whole point isn't necessarily to proc Master Shapeshifter every single time. The whole point is to get your bleeds out, get your damage rolling and then get out and then get into uh, Moonfire, Sunfire, you want to get that spread out into Starfire spams. Then once your bleeds fall off, start the whole process over again. So we also have one for single target here, a Thrash into a couple shreds, into a Rake, into a Rip, and then into a Sunfire to get us out of it. You could probably replace that in Moonfire. It probably would be a little better, but either way, you just want to be applying one to get out of the form. And again, this doesn't necessarily apply five combo points you have to kind of get lucky with a critical strike in there. But for the most part, you're not gonna have any issues getting to that five combo points with this macro. Most of the time you will. Again, Master Shapeshifter is nice to proc, but for the most part, you're gonna be getting a ton of mana back from spamming Wrath and Starfires. So it's not necessarily something that has to proc every single time. Again, we're just wanting to get our bleed effects out. So yeah, that's the two damage macros that I've, I've been using. Again, you don't have to use those. It's just something to kind of get you used to cat weaving. Again, get into cat form, apply your bleeds, get out, and then get into wrath and starfire spams. I will put both of those macros in the description of the video if you guys want to test them out. And let me know what you guys think because I'm always looking for feedback. I think macros are one of the coolest things in this game because it can really simplify the process of a healing or damage rotation. All right, let's talk about cooldowns quickly. Obviously, your main cooldown is going to be Heart of the Wild. We kind of already talked about this, but basically it makes it to where you do a whole bunch of damage and then you can heal through your damage with Dream of Scenarius. We have Scenario and Ward that we're running a 30 second cooldown. You probably want to keep this up on a squishy target. You could also keep it up on the tank if he is taking high damage, but typically I just throw this on the Hunter. 
We also have Iron Bark here as well. About a one minute cooldown is going to reduce the damage that that target takes by 20% for 12 seconds. We also have Bark Skin here on a one minute cooldown. Uh, this is a personal and this is going to make you take less damage, 30% less damage for eight seconds. And we also have a couple of talents that pair nicely with Bark Skin, like Oak Skin, going to reduce the damage taken by an additional 10% and then a matted fur, just a small absorb with it. Then we also have nature swiftness here. So your next regrowth, rebirth or entangling roots is instant free and castable in all forms. Really nice when you need to get a battle res out as battle res does have a cast time. If you're not sure what a battle res is, it's this rebirth spell here. 10 minute cooldown, gonna bring somebody back from the dead if they do die in your mythic plus run then we also have renewal here one and a half minute cooldown basically a built-in health pot and then another big cooldown here we have incarnation tree of life you turn into this big sort of tree form and basically if you're familiar with like ascendance with a restoration shaman you turn into this insane healing form and you just heal for more basically so just kind of show you what that looks like we can go into tree of life here you can see these spells are enhanced Regrowth is free cast. Wild growth, enhanced. Rejuvenation is enhanced. Just more powerful, basically. And then Wrath is also enhanced with uh, no cast time on Wrath. Then I guess the very final thing to talk about here is you can shape shift into bear form to soak some damage. So if you notice, I shifted into bear form here and I got increased health. And what you can actually do is you can cheese a lot of mechanics in a mythic plus setting by shifting into bear form and soaking that damage. So damage in mythic plus is not based on a percentage. It can be based on a percentage of health, but typically it's a flat amount of damage. And this will allow you to negate some of the damage it goes out. Uh, with your increased health pull in bear form so if you know damage is coming out put some hots on yourself swap to bear form soak it then you can swap out and go back go back to your normal rotation okay this video is way longer than i expected it to be i do apologize but restoration druid is one of the more complicated healers and if it's something that you do want to play uh you, you are gonna have to do a little bit of study and you're gonna have to really understand how your tree works uh, I've done a lot of the heavy lifting for you already with some of those damage macros. Again, just something to try out. Uh, let me know what you guys think about them in the comments, if it's useful or not, or if you guys think that that just complicates things even more. Always open to feedback. Closing thought on Restoration Druid. This will be, one of again, one of the more complicated healers. I still believe that Restoration Druid has probably the highest throughput of all healers. If you can kind of get the stars to align, get max hots, max stacks of Mastery of Harmony. I know Restoration Druid isn't doing super great in the beta right now, but it will be fixed with tuning. Restoration Druid is almost always A or S tier. I'm almost positive that Blizzard will fix some of their tuning, some of the issues that they're having in beta. So don't let that scare you away from playing them. Really enjoying some of the mana return that we're getting from Rast and Starfires. That's historically been a big issue for restoration druid at least for myself early in dragonflight season i had a huge i had a huge issues with man i could hardly keep up so seeing those changes with master shapeshifter is very nice and yeah i guess i'll just uh leave it there thank you guys for watching if you want to if you want to support the channel check out some of my socials in the description of the video i've got a patreon i've got a twitch i'm not streaming much on twitch right now but maybe in the future and then we also have a discord again thanks for watching see you on the next one